Why is this happening to me? I only wanted to record the cry of an elephant. I didn't know that it would come down to this. I didn't think I'd meet my end behind a bush on the African savanna. Why do these things happen to me? I never asked for this. Ah, the wild, untamed African savanna, a land full of life, death, and photo opportunities, which is generally what Africa is all about. Africa is a photography and safari simulator game released for the PlayStation 3 in 2008. The game was also known in Asian territories as Hakuna Matata, and got an American release in 2009, while Europe sadly missed out. But, thanks to the PlayStation 3 being region free for games, I was able to play it. The goal in Africa is to generally go around and take photos of animals. The photos you take are then graded, and you receive money based on the grade. You also receive your grade based on angle, target, distance and technique. Another thing you can do is that you can also save photos that you've taken in the game to your PlayStation 3. So that way you can put them onto a USB stick and upload them online, or even better yet, find some of your PSN friends and send it to them. Oh boy, one of them's replied, wonder what he said. Uh, uh, oh. Oh. Alright. You get given missions by different people of the type of animal or animals, and any extra requirements need for the photo, such as having the photo taken at sunset, or, a, or getting as close to an animal as you can. Um, heck, there's even ones where you got to provoke an animal and then take a photo of it. Um, some of them they might even want you to take a photo of two animals, two different animals, they just have to be in the same frame. There's even missions where I don't even need to take a photo of an animal at all. I had to do one where I had to take photos of rock formations. Wow, how exciting was that? Also make sure you don't piss off the animals because if they attack you, you're going to lose all the photos you've taken for that day. Some missions are special missions and may or may not be linked to an email request. These are known as big games and there's about 20 of them spread throughout the game and they present to you a unique situation where you need to take photos of something happening. Well, an example of these are like what you saw at the start, the lion hunting. Um, you've also got a crocodile hunting on the riverbed, a herd of African buffaloes defending themselves from a lion, to more light-hearted events such as a baby elephant with its mother, or a cheetah sitting in front of your jeep. Uh, missions aside, you know what the core elements of the game remind you of? It's got a Pokemon Snap vibe to it. Now I loved Pokemon Snap and I found that Africa generally grabs a lot of the elements and vibes that in my opinion made Pokemon Snap enjoyable to me. So without further ado, let's move on to the good. One thing I've liked about this game is that the soundtrack of Africa is very relaxing and very soothing. Now, I feel that the composers really nailed the soundtrack as it sort of adds to the atmosphere of the game. So um, I'll let you guys have a wee bit of a listen to it. sort of see where I'm getting at here, it just sounds very relaxing and really puts you at ease when you're playing the game. It sort of feels like taking photos and that isn't a chore, but it's more or less the charm of actually doing it. Another thing I liked is the mission variety. 
lot of the missions you receive in the game, you generally have to take a photo of an animal from a particular angle, or uh, while it's doing something. So in this example, an African elephant charging towards the camera. Now, these missions really keep you on your toes, and they really keep you alert when it comes down to exploring the five different places in Africa. Hell, some of the photos you take even get featured as magazine covers or as complimentary pictures and articles. If you're really getting into photography or if it's a hobby for you, these requests can also help you work out what camera's features do what in a DSLR camera. So things such as shutter speed and aperture, as well as teaching you the values of patience and dedication to a subject in order to get that perfect shot. Another neat wee thing is you can even turn your controller sideways and the orientation switches from landscape to portrait which is really good when you're taking photos for those magazine covers. Night Safari was another interesting bit of the game that I liked. Although you don't have the sort of freedom that you do during the day, where you can just get out of your jeep and just casually walk around as far away as you like, it really does bring a new side of the area that you're exploring. So if you take the time to actually get out of your jeep and wander around, there's plenty of different photo opportunities. Just make sure you don't wander too far away from the jeep, otherwise they'll just tell you that you've wandered too far and they'll just put you back to where the jeep is. Another thing to make night safaris more fulfilling is that certain animals can only be found at night as well. And, uh, well, let's, uh, let's face it, some of the animals are pretty damn spooky in the dark. Unfortunately, even the dark can't handle the bad. One thing that really pisses me off about this game is its loading times. Once you've hit start and gone to continue, be prepared to sit here for about a minute and a half while the game loads. Of course, it doesn't really help that when you're saving the game, the save file is about 387 megabytes. Hell, I've even got full games that are actually smaller than that. Another thing that I'm not particularly keen on is product placement. Now I know that Sony, Suzuki and National Geographic might have paid a lot of money to have this stuff featured, but is it really necessary? I'd be happy if the brand of Jeep, camera and magazines were generic, but to me it just feels like I'm playing an advertisement on how much better a Sony Alpha Series DSLR with Sony Alpha Series accessories and lenses are and taking photos of animals as opposed to the made up brand Sensi camera that you get at the start of the game. Now not to be somewhat hypocritical, but some of these missions are actually really pedantic. There's certain missions that are really, really specific, such as taking a photo of an animal at sunset. The problem with this is, is that the animal, the sunset colouring, oh and most importantly, the sun, have to all be in the photo. No sun, no reward. And you have to wait until the following day so you can go out and wait another half an hour just so the sun sets. Then hope for the best because you've got to make sure that the sun and the animal and the sunset colouring are all in the same picture at the same time. There was one particular mission where the animal I was trying to take a photo of would keep running away or walking away from the sun. And so when I tried to get myself into the correct angle, the animal would then run off in the opposite direction. And it took me about, it took me about an hour or so before I finally got it. I actually managed to take a photo of it from really, really far away, got a low score, but hey, who cares, I got the photo. Funny enough, it was a National Geographic cover. The game also slowed down quite a bit at parts for me, but I would probably put that one down to hardware limitations. Now that I've got my ranting out of the way, I think we should move on to the last part of this review. The Ugly Visually, for a 2008-2009 game on the PS3, I think it looks quite impressive. If you ignore the flat textures of the grass, um, the animals have rendered very well in this game. The giraffes actually look different, they're not sort of copy-paste models, and baby animals just aren't simply scaled down models of the adults. They look different too. Mm. Now to wrap up this review, overall, for the most part, I really enjoyed Africa. But I feel that unless you want to spend time waiting for sunset so you can take that perfect shot of an animal with the sun in the background, or if you're having to wait 15 minutes for an elephant to wash itself, you should probably look elsewhere if patience or photography isn't your thing. But seeing as I do a little bit of photography as a hobby, I can see why this game would be appealing. So I think what I'm going to do is, in the end, I'm going to give Africa a Loin King 2 out of 10. That's right, you heard me, the Loin King 2.
Not as good as the first one, but okay. And that concludes Africa for the PlayStation 3. Stay tuned for another journalistic review.